this is a very interesting study because it is um, it is a study that um, maybe a one time study that shows us a real uh, randomized trial which is uh, actually checking one drug versus the other. Now, interestingly enough, um, there is another abstract from the EHA showing that the most uh, common uh, treatment today in AL amyloidosis first line is Cyborg D, meaning that most patients will get um, cyclophosphamide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone as first line, and it is a very effective medication or, or combination of treatment. So the real question would be whether if we add dartumumab, which is an antibody against CD38, it's very effective in uh, myeloma. And certainly we've seen in large series that it is also very effective in relapsed amyloidosis, but in first line of amyloidosis, it has never been tested. And for the past year, there have been a few trials of daratumumab added to standard therapy in uh, myeloma showing very good efficacy. But here comes amyloidosis. And here in this trial, the patients were randomized. There were quite a lot of patients. There were 388 patients that were randomized into two uh, groups. One group of uh, almost 200 patients receiving daratumumab with the cyborg D, with the cyclophosphamide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone. And the other group was receiving just the cyborg D. This was going for six cycles as, um, as uh, standard treatment. And then the group of the patients treated with, with uh, daratumumab uh, would continue as a maintenance therapy for, uh, for a while, um, of meaning two years. And the other group treatment was stopped and was observed for uh, long-term uh, response and, and whatever, um, the endpoints were. But the main endpoint, the primary endpoint of this trial, is to see the overall hematologic complete remission rate. And why is that? It's because we know that in um, amyloidosis, the response rate is the one of the most important things when we want to assess the ability of the patients not only to survive, but also to um, maintain his organ function. Amyloidosis is characterized by organ dysfunction, much more than myeloma, this organ dysfunction is what, what will, uh, um, a long time, uh, be the main prognostic factor of the patient, both survival and effect. It's, uh, it's, um, it's life because most patients will have cardiac involvement. So in this trial, there were quite many patients that were um, with cardiac involvement. Actually, um, about a third of the patients had severe cardiac involvement, meaning that this is not an easy population of patients that are being treated. Um, and also most patients, kind of 60 or 70% of the patients had some kind of cardiac involvement. And also 60% of the patients had kidney involvement as well. So these are typical amyloid patients and they are patients whom we see in our everyday clinic. And they were treated in this regimen. And it the results were very, very good in terms of the patient outcome. And I'll explain in a moment. Uh, interestingly, the patients who were uh, on the Cyborg D treatment, although most of them had nice responses, about 42% um, of them, after finishing the Cyborg D treatment, already have been receiving a subsequent therapy, which is actually daratumumab as a subsequent therapy. But still, we see very, very good results with just first-line daratumumab. And what do I mean? First of all, as I said, the primary endpoint is hematologic complete remission, which is a predictor of both survival, long-term survival, and a predictor of organ response. And what we can see is that about half of the patient had a complete hematologic remission, which is much for much more and far more than the cyborg D patients, which only about a fifth of the patients have achieved this very deep response. So this is already very, very, very uh, encouraging. And 
actually, this has been seen in all patients, even if they had uh, uh, renal disease, even if they had um, uh, cardiac or even severe cardiac disease. Actually, those patients with the severe cardiac disease are the ones with the best responses for some reason. And also, um, patients with, uh, with changes in their genetic changes in their cells, which makes them sometimes a little bit resistant to, to bortezom. We know that patients with translocation 1114 have some sort of resistance. And um, so the, these response is a very good response, even in 1114 uh, uh, translocated uh, uh, cells of these patients. So the overall response rate was also very good, but this we know is very good also in the cyborg D, in the, in the regular treatment where almost 80% will have some sort of response but only 50% of the patients here had a very good partial response or a complete remission. Whereas in the daratumumab arm, 80% of the patients had a very good uh, partial remission or better, as I said, 50% had complete remission. And this has translated into organ deterioration, which is what we want to see. We want to see that these patients will ameliorate their um, organ dysfunction. So uh, most of the patients with the daratumumab I had major organ uh, um, dysfunction ameliorated, whereas only half of the patients with the cyborg D managed to do that. And so this is very impressive and this is very important in terms of amyloidosis. And um, so the organ response in a way, the way that the heart is getting better, that we can measure it by, by biomarkers or uh, renal response, meaning that the, the um, uh, protein in the urine is less than it was. Um, so we can see that these responses were about doubled with the dart tumor. So um, this, is, this is very impressive. And the most important thing is that this did not come, there were a little bit more infections, but um, this did not come with severe side effects uh, added to the Cyborg D basic protocol. So this is very encouraging, both because Dartum now and in this trial was given subcutaneously, meaning that it was very convenient for the patients. And we were fearing that maybe cardiac patients will have severe shortness of breath or other, or other uh, transfusion related events. And no, it did not happen. And actually Dartum was very, very safe. So uh, in conclusion, I would say that Dartum was shown to be superior to Cyborg D, the Velke, bortezomib-based therapy alone. It resulted in deeper and more rapid hematologic responses. And um, this treatment did delay organ uh, dysfunction or deterioration and it, it improved the organ, the organ survival. There was no um, we do know that, that amyloidosis, quite like myeloma, may cause also uh, uh, death of the patient. So the, 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 some of the patient died, of course, we do know that it happens um, at the same rate, but it is really too early to say in the long run if this is going to change. But the major thing that we wanted to see from this trial is that the daratumumab does affect uh, the organ dysfunction. This has been showing very beautifully. Well, actually, this trial was based, it, it, unlike in myeloma, where daratuma was given in fourth line, then in second line, then now in first line in clinical trials in amyloidosis, there were no clinical trials done in uh, second, third, fourth line. But there is a very much growing experience, uh, an article that was published from many centers showing a very profound effect of daratumumab uh, in treatment of AL amyloidosis. This has been our experience as well. One of these abstracts at the IHA um, was coming from uh, Israel, um, and there we had almost 50 patients treated in, some of them in fourth, fifth, sixth line treatment with daratumumab and achieving very nice results. And what is more encouraging is the fact that with daratumumab, we can get very prolonged responses sometimes. So many patients will receive it even in, in fourth or fifth line and still will maintain remission for a very, very long time. And this is very encouraging. And I think the reason for it is probably because 
the advantage of AL amyloidosis is that it's not a very proliferative disease, meaning that the load of disease is low and daratumumab, even as a single agent, can sometimes overcome this low load of proliferative disease and, and, and maintain this, this um, uh, complete remission rate and, in, in, in a way, this organ response rate for a very long time. Well, as usual in AL amyloidosis, these, um, the, these abstracts are sometimes quoting small series of patients, as I said, with daratumumab, of course, uh, which is a very um, impressive result, even in, in later lines. And there are starting to be uh, uh, reports of newer medications. Basically, we're talking about um, venetoclax, for uh, 11, translocation 1114 patients. We do know that uh, 1114 patients um, are sometimes resistant to bortezomib, especially in AL amyloidosis. And um, although in myeloma they are not high risk patients, they will relapse like any other patients. And so uh, for some um, technical or mechanical uh, uh, reason, Venetoclax is a, is a small molecule that interferes in the cell survival. And it works mostly in these patients that their cells harbor this translocation, the 1114 translocation. And therefore, venetoclax seems, as, as in AL amyloidosis, about 50% of patients or almost 50% of patients will have this translocation. This seems like a kind of a very promising drug for these patients. And actually, there are a few abstracts uh, uh, in the EHA. One of them is the one showing the most, the largest series to date. It's not a lot of patients. I think it's seven or eight patients. But all of them responded very well. This comes as well as, as my own experience showing that venetoclax gives a profound response in AL amyloidosis patients, uh, even when it's given in fourth, fifth, or sixth time, still patients have a very, very deep responses and prolonged responses. So this is very encouraging as well. Well, um, I think the next big trial would be a trial that is supposed to be or starting to open right now, uh, which is a trial once again utilize, utilizing um, an antibody that dissolves or supposedly dissolves the amyloid. Um, it's called uh, uh, KL-101. It's an antibody like previous antibodies that were very promising in a way, uh, but did not work. This one seems to be with very high affinity to the amyloid. And it's very promising in terms of the phase one and two, the first phases of trials that we're testing it, showing that it did ameliorate organs and organ responses in AL amyloidosis patients. So now it's going to be at, um, given in first line uh, with the standard treatment, as we said, bortezomib, cyborg, the Cyborg-D protocol. And when added, we hope that eventually we will see this, uh, uh, that it will help these patients at first line. And probably if it will, then we can continue and test it in other lines. Otherwise, we hope that soon enough there will be a large trial uh, all over the world using this venetoclax that I uh, uh, spoke about in uh, relapsing patients with AL amyloidosis because at least half of them have this translocation 1114.